using naked charts. Hi, it's Charlie giving you Wednesday's video. I hope you're very well. And um, what we're going to do here is um, take everything off. And so I'm just going to remove all my moving averages. So let's do that. And because sometimes it's a really good thing to do um, to actually strip everything back, whatever you normally have, whether it's Fibonacci or pivot pivots or moving averages or whatever indicators you have on your charts, take everything off and just go back to basics of um, technical analysis. <clears throat> and I was doing this as a, um, a session, one of our sessions in the day trading room yesterday. And um, and it, it can help with your overall analysis. So what I'm going to do is just squeeze all this up. So I've got a 240 minute chart here at the moment. So it can help with your overall and directional analysis and, and, and whatnot. So um, what I'm going to do is just um, Scroll, scroll back a bit. So what I can see, identify already, is there's some highs through here. Multiple tests through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and um, let's see if I can um, duplicate that line and then drag the duplicate up to here. Okay, so that's a, a, a fairly you know typical sort of um, resistance line there that we can put in so useful to have on my charts going into the future we've all I've already got this other line in um, which chops through and it, it hits some highs as you can see through here and these lows through here and gradually what you can do is you can start to build a picture as to where I mean you can put lines on all over your charts and you end up with too much but certainly you can um, put some lines on which you think okay they're probably quite relevant these ones uh, without going too overboard uh, and you can always take them off once you've put them on so I quite often put a load of lines on then take some of them off so I've just drawn one on here as well and you see that mat matches up through these lows pretty much there there and these little lows here yeah that's ideal so that's another level so already now we're starting to build a picture that we've been up here into yesterday um, we've rolled over yesterday and we've got this level which if the euro is going to carry on coming down which at the moment looks that that's the the um, uh, where the the pressure is after yesterday's downside move then this is the next sort of um, technical level and now we've got obviously normal um, lows here but there's lots of tests through this level here now what I also did yesterday was put some trend lines on as well now those trend lines are, are already obsolete now but when I was doing it um, a trend line went on sort of through here um, and so I said to the guys look you know we can we can put these on and we were talking when when the market was way up here you see and um, put these on and of course the market when it gets down to that we at least have to consider that that, that the market might want to bounce or it might want to just um, crater through it and and then it's a, a proper trend line break but the nice thing is with putting lines on your charts like this is all of a sudden you can then once you've done this analysis and you can say right okay if we were if we had have broken up yesterday that really would have opened the door potentially to uh, a break a lot higher although um, let's just squeeze this back a little bit no no that's fine I'm um, looking at that um, that could have potentially opened the door to a run a lot higher although yeah if I go back to the hourly chart there would have been a trend line or well, there was a trend line across here and actually I could keep that trend line that's quite a nice line there so I could keep that because at some point the euro could if it if it starts to uh, to build could work its way all the way back up in which case that trend line would come into play let alone the horizontal levels so all of a sudden you, you start to build a picture as to oh okay well if I want to be on the long side what does the market need to do and um, and what levels do I need to consider and if these levels if it breaks through these levels then I want to be on the long side um, and likewise um, with the short side so it really starts to give you a, a nice picture we're going to go through a couple of other markets so let's go to dollar cad now so it's another market oh, I've already got it on I've kept them on from yesterday okay so um, what I did yesterday was um, I must have saved the chart when I put these on but again this is dollar cad on a four hour chart um, put a trend channel on and so we've bobbed along down the bottom end of the channel but you can see now it's come into that channel so that's useful information I can put on a from what I can see here oh yeah look at that so I can also put on a horizontal line a 
map out there and I'm just going to change the colour of it because we can't see if it's red can we let's see is that there we go so we've now got this horizontal line here as well so we can see that this dollar CAD has been when it came down yes it's moseyed on through a little bit but it's been come down to this lower trend channel line and um, and also this horizontal line um, now I had this put this trend channel line on yesterday picking that because of these highs here so I put this line on first then duplicated it and dragged it down to this low here sorry did I say hi there to this low here and so and then we've got this whole overlap between a lower trend line and this horizontal support zone so just real food for thought you can pick any chart I could go to dollar yen um, hopefully I haven't got anything on there I can't remember what I was doing oh I have <laughs> so what did I do with dollar yen yesterday so you can see that I put a trend line from this peak up here going through these this peak here so again really important level there because if dollar yen decides to come up that's going to be something that's really going to be key if we go for a breakout now I've obviously put in a horizontal line here as well where I've seen that there's been a load of touches and tests um, and you know not every move stops at the line but you're looking at clusters of price action basically and we can see that all the way through and all the way through so we can see that this horizontal line here around about 105.80 is an important level and then I could um, pick some other levels no doubt um, back down at these lows for horizontal um, support as well but certainly if the dollar yen was to break up then I now know ah 105.80 is a really important level um, if it can break through that and this trend line whoa then we're really opening the door to um, to upside and then and that's when I can start making some trading decisions so just by taking everything off it gives you a different perspective sometimes if you get caught up in your indicators or whatever you have in your charts I know appreciate some people don't have anything on their charts and um, but it's just a good way to do your analysis and then you can then add on your fibs and your whatnot that you might be using and your um, whatever technical analysis it is because it doesn't really matter uh, what your technical analysis is um, it's a trading is a very personal journey it's about what works for you um, but one thing that we can do is um, go to basics sometimes and literally look at true support resistance levels and um, and use that to gauge get some analysis and so we can actually formulate a plan and then once we have a plan I could very easily create a plan now on this dollar yen and say right I can see those resistance levels there if the dollar yen was to breach those I'd want to be on the long side there you go and then I'm starting to build a plan um, on, just on the naked chart there I hope that's of use today um, I'll be back at the end of the week for another video take care for now